Okay, I'm not going to teach out of Second of First Kings tonight because you know I've been do, I do a series, but the Lord spoke to me and told me I need I need to do something different tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to touch everyone here, dear Lord, and just open up their hearts to your word, dear Lord, and just touch them wherever they're at, dear Lord. The ones that's not here, just be with them. The ones that are working in North Carolina, the people in Florida and in North Carolina, we just ask you to just touch them right now. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, treasure your life. And do what matters most. Okay, accidents can happen at any time. None of us know when the wind's going to come, do we? It can come suddenly. It can come unexpected. The hurricanes that's been hitting everywhere, the flooding, they just, people was going about their everyday life in that flooding situation. And then they was gone. See, it reminds us that life is unpredictable. When we leave our house each morning to go to our jobs, to go to the, just run up the road to the store, to the smoke shack or wherever you go, you could be hit by a big truck pulling out that road and thrown into eternity. Never know, do you? So we don't know if we're going to come back in the same day or not, do we? Life is not in our hands. Jesus once told the story of the rich farmer who thought of building bigger barns to store more of his grain. But God said, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded of you. Then who will get what you have prepared for? He forgot that he was going to leave this world someday, didn't he? See, accidents in life cause us to relook at what is important. We must treasure every living moment to do what is right and good. We do not know how much time we have left here before we meet God. That is why how we live today is important. And we're going to look at a story about a rich man and Lazarus. And I'm going to divide this story into three parts. See, you cannot salvage things once life is over. Share things now. Don't treasure things but people. Things will pass away. They'll be gone in a blink of eye. They can burn up tomorrow. Everything we have will be left behind once this life is over. There was a certain rich man who had clothed in purple and fine linen and fared scrumptiously. I mean... Uh, First, in Luke 16, verse 19 through 21 is what I'm going to read first. Named Lazarus, full of stores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Here we see this certain rich man. He has everything. You know, Jesus did not present this like he did all the other parables. You know, in the other parables, he just said a man or woman or whatever. This one had a name, Lazarus. So it's actually more of a story. He actually named the individual, the poor man here. We have every reason to believe that Jesus gave this as an actual case history he knew from eternal perspective. See, this rich man was clothed in purple, 
fine linen. He ate the best food. And it didn't say he just ate it once every once in a while. It said he eat every day. And you know, back then they just had like these feasts at certain times of the year, like but this man had it every day. So he was really richer than a lot of the other people were. Fared scrumptiously means a word used for feasting, gourmet feeding on exotic and costly dishes. He did this every day. He ate costly dishes, the fine, finest food. He had everything sitting right there before him. The beggar, he was full of sores. He laid at the gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs. And not back then when they, eat, they didn't eat with forks and spoons and stuff like that. They eat with their hands and they just eat it. Well then they wipe their hands off on this bread and then they just throw the bread in the floor and that's what Lazarus was wanting. He was wanting what fell from the table, the crumbs, where they had, the rich man had wiped his hands on. See, here are two men, and day after day, there is not a space of 20 yards between them, yet a distance like the sea divides the two. See, the dogs, he was so bad that the dogs even came and licked his sores. Jesus described the misery of the beggar in these strong, nauseating details. So here in the first part, we see the rich man completely engrossed by his wealth. He made the mistake of focusing only on the here and now, only for this world. He was preoccupied by things, and he died leaving them all behind. You know, they have this new religion now that they call the prosperity gospel. You're going to see that this, part, this story right here, it, it blows it away. Because it says, if you serve God, give me $1,000 or $200, you'll be rich beyond your means. What you give me, I'll give you back more abundantly. It blows it away, don't it? Because look at Lazarus. And, and, and some of them, they say that, well, the more you give, the more you get when you get to heaven. That ain't true. See, the rich man, he takes pride in his wealth. His God is his riches. And we see that all the time, don't we? We see people setting up in their rich houses. And they just want to accumulate money. They don't never care about anybody else but their self or their family. Huh? Misers, yeah. I, I read stories about where people would pinch pennies and dollars and not even to eat the right food or anything. And then they go into their house and find money stuffed in mattresses. So what did they have? Nothing. Nothing. See, his only concern was live in the grandest house, eat the best food, and wear the finest clothing. He wanted everybody to see what he had. He wanted to be the big dog in that town above everybody, didn't he? And it's sad because he invested his whole life on things that are temporary. No matter how much you've earned on earth, you're going to leave everything behind. So don't love things. Use things. 
Use what you must to bless others. The Bible teaches us to use what we have, what God has given us for His purpose, for His glory. To share our things with those in need, to use things so that others are blessed. And it, it, it can, if you don't have nothing, you still can share the gospel of what Jesus has done for you. That's our thing. We want to tell everybody what Jesus has done for us. How we've overcome stuff. That's why I give my testimony so much to, and tell people how much I have overcome through Christ. Because if I didn't have that to cling to, I don't think I would be here. So, the, the, if recent, the accidents, all the flood and the hurricanes tell us that life is fragile but precious. We make every effort to save lives. That's what we want to do. We want to bring people to Jesus Christ. Life matters, not things. Therefore, relationships with people are important. Relationship with our children is important, isn't it? Relationship, if our parents are still alive, is important. Don't make the same mistakes that the rich man made. And you know, some, I know... I didn't have a good relationship with my parents. I loved them. I took care of them when they was old. But growing up, they was so mean to me. And so I can't explain. My mother abused me so bad that, you know, it's hard to have a relationship like that with somebody who's abusive to you. But you have to forgive them. See, forgiveness is for us. It's not for them. So you have to forgive them. It don't matter what your mother, what your daddy has done to you. You have to forgive them. Because from... If, I know some of y'all hadn't heard my testimony, but when your parents abuse you so bad, and it's hard... And I can tell you from experience, it is so hard. But it's a God thing. I had to do it. I knew to be saved, I had to do it. I had to forgive my parents for what they had done to me. And anybody else has ever done anything to me, I knew I had to forgive them. Because it wasn't for them, it was for me. But see, God gave the rich man a chance to change. Right in front of his house was the obvious need. The beggar, Lazarus. He was covered in sores. He was wanting food. He needed clothing. He even had dogs licking his sores. He was given a chance to move away from loving things to loving people. To loving God that Lazarus worshipped. But he did not. Not once or twice, but apparently every day he was given a chance to give Lazarus a decent meal, to clothe him, but he did not. If he had, he would have known Lazarus as a friend he had most likely known Lazarus' is God and life after death. We read in the last part of this story that the rich man wished for Lazarus to go to his father's house and warn his five brothers. Lazarus was at the gate every day and he ignored him. You know he had to see him. And he probably even told his servants, Drag that old man away from my house here. I can't have people seeing him laying there like that. If he had paid attention to Lazarus, he would have been saved. 
See, we are blessed today. We may not be rich, but we have enough, don't we? We have food, we have shoes, we have clothes. And we've come to know in God whom we can trust. So we know that when we die, we're going to spend eternity in heaven with Him. And that's the greatest thing. Let us share what we have with those in need. In 1 Timothy 6, 17, Paul tells Timothy to warn the people not to put their hope in wealth, but in God. For He is the one who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. And then he said, Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of life that is truly life. And you know, you may think you don't have nothing to share, but you have more than you think you do. When, I, I've seen it. When some of these guys come in here, they don't have nothing. You know, you're laying up your treasure in heaven when you give them a pair of socks. Yeah, help them out. Give them a few dollars. I mean, you're laying up your treasure in heaven when you do all that. And you don't even realize how much God is keeping account for all this. So, he got, the Lord wants us to store up treasures in heaven. John Wesley said, do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can and all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you can. George W. Tuet was a well-known Texas preacher. He was invited to dinner at the home of a very wealthy old woman. After the meal, the host led him to a place where they could get a good view of the surrounding area. Pointing to the oil wells, he said, over the landscape. He boasted, 25 years I came here, I had nothing. Now, as far as you can see, cattle. Look to this way, grain sprawling in the wind. It's all mine. Turning east toward the cattle, they're all mine. Then pointing to the west and the beautiful forest, it's all mine too. He paused, expecting Dr. Tuit to compliment him on his great success. However, placing one hand on the man's shoulder and pointing heavenward, heavenward with the other, he simply said, how much do you have in that direction? We may brag and say we have all this stuff, but it's not going to do us any good, is it? 22. So it was that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So here the rich man's died and the beggars died. See, Lazarus didn't even have the honor of a funeral, grave or anything. He was probably buried in what they called the potter's field then. But you know, this rich man, he probably had all the pomps and circumstance. And you say, he had five brothers, had all of his family there mourning him. But where was he? Yes. He had honor of a burial, but no angels to escort him and no pleasant destination. See, the beggar was carried by the angels. 
And I know Mike, y'all have heard Mike talk about how his aunt died. Some of you have, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Mike's aunt had cancer and she was laying in her bed dying. And she could not even lift her arms up. Couldn't open her eyes. She was so weak laying there. And when she drew her last breath, she held her arms up and then just put them slowly back down. And we all think that the angels was coming to carry her to Jesus because she was a religious woman. She loved the Lord. She was the one that led Mike to the Lord. So I know, you know, he knew that she was in heaven. But I also have a story about what happens to you if you're not saved. And this was my aunt. When I was younger, my daddy would hire me out to stay with people, you know, that was sick or whatever. And I was staying at the hospital, and I was about 14 years old. And I had an aunt. She never went to church. She smoked and drank like a sailor and cussed too, probably. But she didn't have nobody to stay with her family or anything. So Daddy said, well, would you please go stay with, you know, with your aunt? So I went and stayed with her, and I was sitting there by our hospital bed, and, you know, she was getting close to dying. And all I could hear, it scared me. She was laying there screaming, kicking, telling, don't take me, don't take me. She was just, a, I mean, it was just constantly, all night long, just screaming before she died. So in my mind, I thought, well, you know, I told my grandmother, I said, she said, yeah, she wasn't a very good woman. And that's all she would say about her, her family. So, I mean, it's, it's real. People don't believe it's real, but it is so real. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And He gives you a chance to repent. And He just keeps giving you a chance and keeps giving you a chance. To one day, like I said, you're going to walk out here and walk away from here or drive away from here and your last chance is going to be gone. See, opportunities once passed will never return. We don't always have the chance to do the right thing. The rich man was given a chance, but he did not take it. He died. He left behind everything he had in his riches. His house, his things, his food, his clothing, his fine linen. But the saddest thing he lost was his salvation. He was too preoccupied with life on earth and did not seek God. Let us treasure every living moment we have today. We seek God and live for Him every day. Once time has passed, it will not return. Once it's gone, it's gone, isn't it? People prepare for life on earth, but seldom the life after. They neglected that which is most important. The contrast between the rich man and Lazarus is great. The rich man had a good life, a decent burial, but he suffers in agony in, for eternity. Lazarus had a difficult life and died without fanfare, but he was carried by the angels into paradise and now enjoys God's presence. Lazarus trusted God while he was living. In fact, his name means God is my helper. Once life is over, opportunity to make it the right choice will be over. 
You know, I talked about choices last lesson. You have to make the choice. Do you want to serve God or do you want to serve Satan? You have to seek God while you still have a chance to do so. Make efforts to know Jesus and what he has done with you. And how, somebody asked, how do you know Jesus? Get in your word. Read about him. Read about all the things. Talk to him. Pray. That's how you knew Jesus, wouldn't you? You knew about Jesus. The Bible says salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment of God. So don't doubt, don't procrastinate or hesitate. The life we have now will fade away, but the abundant life that God gives will not. It's eternal, forever. You need to put your trust in Jesus. He is the only Savior you have. Seek God while you can. Put God first in your lives. Once you leave here, come to church. Go to church somewhere. You don't have to be here. Here, go somewhere. You have to be in your Word, or you're not. You're going to fall away. You know, I, I gave illustration about the you know, ember. When it's taken out of the fireplace, it burns out. And that's how our light does. If we're not in the light, it's going to fade away. It's going to burn out. If we don't stay in worship to Jesus, read our Bible, our light's just going to fade away, isn't it? And we're going to be a Boomerang, as Mike calls them. <laughs> See, you got to get in your word because if you don't, the only thing we have now is our word. So if if you know someone in need, pray for them. We all have family that do not know Jesus. Pray for them. Serve the Lord while you can. When you have a chance to do something of eternal value, do it now. You know, in a lot of countries, they can't even have a Bible. They can't talk about Jesus. They have to hide underground, even worship the Lord. So they're not even allowed to do anything for Jesus. Before we get up in the morning and rush on our way, we need to pray. Ask the Lord, okay, what do I need today? What do you want me to do today? Lord, please don't let me waste my day away. Let me do something for you. Help me spend today loving you and doing your will. Wake him up. No. <laughs> we don't always have a chance to do something for God. Seek Him now and serve Him with all your heart. Finally, the third part. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus' evil things. But now he is confronted, comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to to you cannot, nor can those from here there pass to us. See, the rich man, according to my commentator, he was a descendant of Abraham. That's why he called him Father Abraham. 
So his father, he didn't disown him by not letting him out of hell, not giving him any kind of water. But having Abraham as a father was not enough to escape torment in the life to come. You may have good parents that serve the Lord, but they're not going to save you. Now the rich man was the beggar. The tale it's turned on him, ain't he? He's begging for Lazarus to bring him some water. And but you know, him being in torment was not because he was rich. It's because in his life he he was apart from love and the trust in God. Because he never gave his life to Jesus, to God. And he just demonstrated by his life. Lazarus himself was richer than the man, than the rich man, wasn't he? And see, even in the afterlife, think about this, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool his tongue. He was even in the afterlife, he was looking at the rich man as a, he was superior to the Lazarus because he wanted him to be a servant to him to come dip his finger on the water. See, this shows that death does not take away his sense of entitlement or his station in life. He still thinks he's better than other people that's there. And he could not plead that he was he didn't even know who Lazarus was because he recognized him, didn't he? Once that he was there. It's not a want of knowledge then, but a want of what the innermost secret of his tragedy was. He didn't care anything about Lazarus. He just wanted for himself, didn't he? Even in where he was burning up in Hades. He just cared about himself. Mm-hmm. Right. Same thing. See, he told him, Abraham told him, Remember that in your lifetime you receive good things. Through his earthly life, the rich man had all the good things of life. Now Lazarus has all the good things. And he did not share any of them with him. So why should Lazarus share what he had? Because it said there was a great gulf. He couldn't even get to If Lazarus had wanted to come over there, he couldn't do it. He couldn't have crossed over to it. The rich man... Then he said, 27... I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. And he said, No, Father Abraham. But if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rise from the dead. See, here now he's thinking of his brothers. He don't want them to be there. He didn't think nothing about Lazarus laying there in sores and starving to death. But now his brothers, he don't want them to come here. So he told him, you know, okay, Send this guy. He's, de he's dead. Let him raise him up. Let him go tell him. He said, he ain't going to listen to him. You wouldn't ever listen to him when he's about your gate. And they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. But he pointed out that they're not even, they would never cared anything about Moses and the prophets or the word that was taught to them. All they care about is 
eating and being merry and their riches. That's all they care about. See, the rich man regretted, but it was too late. The thoughts of those missed opportunities saddened him. He would have saved himself had he paid more attention to Lazarus. He wished he had not wasted his life away. And that's how we have to be. We can't have regrets. We have to go forward from now on. Once you give your life to Christ, you have to look forward. What you got to look forward to? You can't look back. The back is gone. It's in the past. Now, now he only wishes for his five brothers will be warned, but he can no longer do anything to save them. We do not want to live with that such a great regret. If you know somebody that you think does not know Jesus Christ, put a word in for them. Say something. Speak up. God has left the preaching of the gospel of salvation to the living. We must seize every living moment to share Christ. A simple word can go a long way. It can touch somebody. Just one word can touch somebody's heart. Paul said, I have become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. 1 Corinthians 9, 22, 23. And I've got this poem I want to read before I quit. Is this you? My friend and I stand in judgment now and feel that you're to blame somehow. On earth I walked with you each day and never did you point away. You know the Lord in truth and glory, but never did you tell the story. My knowledge then was very dim. You could have led me safe to Him. Though we lived together on earth, you never told me of the second birth. You never spoke to my lost soul and of the Christ who can make me whole. You taught me many things that's true. I called you my friend and trusted you. But I learn now it's too late. You could have kept me from this fate. We walked by day and talked by night, and yet you showed me not the light. You let me live, work, and die. You knew I'd never live on high. Yes, I called you friend in life and trusted you through joy and strife. And yet, on coming to the end, I cannot now call you my friend. See, let us do all we can while we still can for the souls of men and women who plead. And we got to plead with them earnestly that they have to accept Jesus Christ because time is getting so short. For long, we're going to look up and it's going to be too late, isn't it? The Lord said, The night is coming when no one can work. John 9, 4. Treasure your life and do what matters most. Seek God and share Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask if anyone here does not know you, that they just ask you to come into their heart, dear Lord, that they just give your life wholeheartedly. And if they just speak to their mind someone that they can talk to or touch that does not know you before it's too late, dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to just touch them right now, dear Lord, and just be with them as they go back to their place to sleep tonight, dear Lord. And I ask you to just be with them in your name, I pray.